Hello, Primary 5 pupils. Once again, I welcome you to our online lessons. My name is Anitra Devora and I'm teaching Primary 5 English. We are still on the present perfect tense. Before I went last time, I told you to consult for me 10 sentences in the present perfect tense. Meaning that you, in, the, in the sentences you had to construct, you were supposed to use has, have, or had. You are supposed to use has or have. Then you are also supposed to use the past participle forms. Can you look at the sentences you constructed? Remember we said that with singular subjects, we use has. With plural subjects, we use have. With first, per with first person pronoun I, we use have. With second person pronoun you, we use have. So, you check the sentence. For example, we said it has rained just a moment ago. We said mommy has had the baby. A bird has flown in the air. Now, let's continue with the lesson. So, we are still on the present perfect tense. But this time, we are going to talk about the active voice and the passive voice of the present perfect tense. Meaning that we are going to construct sentences in the active voice. Then we construct sentences in the passive voice. We change sentences from active to passive. Then we also change sentences from passive to active. So, by the end of the lesson, each one of you should be able to construct your own sentences, not mine. Construct them in the active voice. Then you should also construct sentences in the passive voice. Then you should be able to change sentences from the active voice to the passive voice. And also ch change sentences from the passive voice to the active voice. So, the active voices and the passive voice. Right now, I'm focusing on the active voice. As we said last time, the active voice focuses on the doer of the action. So the active voice focuses on the subject, the person or the, who performs an action. So here we are focusing on the subject. And as I told you last time, we cannot construct a sentence, in, uh, we change a sentence from active to passive when the, the sentence must have three parts. It must have the subject, the verb, and the object. In active voice, a sentence must have three parts. Even in part, it should have the subject, should have the object, and the verb. So, here, we are going to use has or have. Then we are going to use been. Then we are going to use past participle verbs. For example, Musime has cut a tree. Musime has cut a tree. If I have a sentence, Musime has cut a tree. Now, can you identify the three parts? Musime. Which part of the sentence is Musime? Very good. Musime is the subject. Who can tell me which part is the object in this sentence? Which part is the object? Someone has said a tree. Very good. A tree is the object then the verb will be has cut this is a compound verb it is made up of two words there is the has as the helping verb then cut as the main verb now if i tell you to change this sentence musina has cut a tree that is in active voice so we are going to change from active voice to passive voice musina has cut what has musina done active voice musina has cut a tree. Remember, as last time we said, the passive voice focuses on the object. It focuses on the object on which an action has been performed. So here, when we are looking at the object of the sentence is a tree. So when I say passive voice, we are looking what has happened to a tree. What happened to a tree? Musinda has cut a tree. What happened to a tree? So we are going to say a tree has been cut by Musime. A tree has been cut by Musime. As I told you last time, in passive voice, we are going to use by. When we are introducing the subject, when you are introducing the person who did, who did the action, when I are introducing the person who did the action, we use by. So, we remember we use has or have. Since a tree is one we are using has, 
Then we use been. Then we use past participle verb. The past participle verb of cut is cut. So we say a tree has been cut by Masine. We go to the second sentence. He has sung a nice song. He has sung a nice song. Here we are looking at the subject. Who did the action? He. What did he what has he done? He has sung a nice song. And remember, as I told you, in a passive voice, if the subject is not mentioned, if the subject is not named, if the subject is not clear, we don't bring back the subject in passive voice. For example, when I say, he has sung a nice song, who? Who is he? Is he a musician? Is he a teacher? Is he a pupil? Who is he? Is he daddy? Is he uncle? Is he my brother? We don't know who he is. Because we don't know who he is, in the passive voice, we don't bring it back. So what shall we say? A nice song has been sung. Because in the passive voice, we focus on the object on which an action has been performed. So here our object is the song. Which kind of song was it? It was a nice song. So we are going to say, a nice song has been sung. We don't bring back he. Why? Because it is unclear who he is. Then, we are going to construct sentences about these pictures. Picture number one. Active voice first. Picture number one. Maybe there, are, there is a chef and he's frying potatoes. So we are going to say a chef has fried potatoes. A chef has fried potatoes. And now we change to passive voice. What has happened to the potatoes? We are going to say the potatoes have been fried by the chef. The potatoes have been fried by the chef. Or we can say, since here we don't know who did it. Maybe it was my mother. Maybe it was the maid. We don't know. So we can even say, she has fried potatoes. She has fried potatoes. Now when you say she has fried potatoes, we don't know who she was. Even our picture doesn't show, show the person who did it. So in passive voice, now remember when we don't know the person who, who did it. In passive voice, we don't bring back the subject. So what shall we say? Potatoes have been fried. Potatoes have been fried. We got picture two. What has the hen done? What has the hen done? So, the hen has laid eggs. The hen has laid eggs. Now here, when you say the hen has laid eggs, that is active voice. Because we are looking at what the hen, who is the subject of the sentence, has done. And if we are to change that to passive, we look at what has been done to the eggs. What has happened to the eggs. So we are going to say, the eggs have been laid by a hen. The eggs have been laid by, the, the, by a hen. The eggs have been laid by a hen. Then, here. What have they grown in the garden? What have they grown? They are men. So I don't say they have grown maize. These are maize plants. They have grown maize. They have grown maize. That is active voice. So we have to change that to passive voice. What shall we say? In passive voice, maize has been grown. Maize has been grown. Because we don't know their names. Since we don't know their names, we say maize has been grown. Then here, we see paper has been burnt. We don't know who did it. So we are going to say, he has burnt paper. He has burnt paper. Or we can say, he has burnt pieces of paper. He has burnt pieces of paper. Now we don't know who did it. So in the passive voice, we are just looking at the paper. I will say, pieces of paper have been burnt. Pieces of paper have been burnt. Then, I know most of you like this game. The girl, what has the girl done? The girl has blown bubbles. A girl has blown bubbles. So what has happened to the bubbles? Bubbles have been blown by a girl. 
bubbles have been blown by a girl. Then in this picture, what has happened to the pencil? You see the pencil. What has happened to the pencil? A pencil had been, has been broken. A pencil has been broken. Do we know who did it? No, we don't know. So you are constructing passive voice. A pencil has been broken. Well, but we can put in passive, in, in active voice, we can say, he has broken a pencil. Because we can see some hands here. We can even say she has broken a pencil because we don't know who did it. So when we don't know the person who has performed the action, we are going to say, in passive voice, we don't bring back the subject. So we are going to say, a pencil has been broken. Then, you can see this man is putting on a hood. Because of that, we can't see his face. So what has he done? This is a bad habit. Don't do it. So we can say, he has, he has stolen a lady's purse. He has stolen a lady's purse. What has happened to the, a lady's purse? We call a lady. We don't know her name. What has happened to a lady's purse? They are going to say, a lady's purse has been stolen. A lady's purse has been stolen by a man whom we don't know. A lady's purse has been stolen. As we have seen in the pictures, in the passive voice, in the passive voice, we have to use has or have. Then we use been. And we put by, if we know the subject, then the subject comes last. So, for example, the passive form of the, of the present perfect tense is developed by using has or have plus been plus the past participle form of the verbs. For example, I have written two letters this morning. That is in active voice. In the passive voice, we are going to say two letters have been written this morning. Someone has broken a glass. What are we going to say? A glass has just been broken. The teacher has told me. We say, I have been told by the teacher. Has he eaten food? What do we say? Has food been eaten by him? Now here, we are putting passive voice, but in the question. There we begin with has. If we are putting passive voice in the question, has he eaten food? Interrogative, passive voice, we say, has food been eaten? Has food been eaten? Even you can put by him or you leave out, but we usually leave it out. Who has taken my pen? Who has taken my pen? That is a question. In the passive voice, we are going to say, by whom has my pen been taken? By whom has my pen been taken? The dog hasn't eaten the bone. The dog hasn't eaten the bone. The bone hasn't been eaten by a dog. So, we end there. I will, put, I will put the activity later. But now, I request you to sit down. Write 10 sentences. Five sentences in active voice and five sentences in passive voice. The way we do, you write a sentence in passive voice, you change it to active voice. Then, those are five. Then the next five sentences, you write a sentence in passive voice, you change it to active voice. For example, you can say number one. I have seen a dog as number one. That is in active voice. Then you will have to change that and you say a dog has been seen. Then you can say the baby has drunk milk. That is in active voice as number two. Then you change it and you say, milk has been drunk by a baby. Like that, you write for me five sentences. Then you write five sentences in passive voice. For example, you can say, English has been taught by teacher Deborah. English has been taught by teacher Deborah. Now, that is in passive voice. So you will have to change and you say, teacher Deborah has taught English. You can go to number two. You can say, the reporters have written interesting news so we say interesting news has have been has been written by the reporters you can say mommy has bought a new dress and we say a new dress has been written by money that is actually has been a new dress has been bought by money that is in passive voice but now the five last sentences are supposed to be 
passive voice first, active voice later. For example, you can say, a new dress has been bought by money. And then you change that sentence to active. You say, money has bought a new dress. You can say, a book has been read by a pupil. A book has been read by a pupil. Then you say, passive voice. Then in active you say, a pupil has read a book. In that way, you will continue, write for me five sentences. In the passive voice, first you change them to active. Five sentences, active voice first, you change them to passive. And I please request you to stay safe. Corona is still there. Don't forget to put on the masks. Wash your hands regularly. Don't forget to sanitize. Don't move around in the neighborhood because you don't know who has that disease. Till we meet again, stay safe. Thank you.